I have had so many comments from you guys saying that RAS is too hard, that the economy is broken, and that you get trampled by stacks of enemies as soon as you start the game as one of these smaller, harder nations. Now, what I'm going to try and do today is take you step by step through why that isn't true and why you can survive and thrive as whatever nation you want in this mod. Now I concede RIS is a very hard mod and it is not for the faint hearted. But the way I'm going to show you, I'm going to be playing as Athens on very hard, very hard. Now in case you don't know, Athens is in my opinion the hardest start in the game and you know it's top five definitely and I think most of the mod team would agree with me on that one. And on top of that, very hard, very hard in this mod is so hard it is like vanilla very hard times 100 so i'm going to try and show you guys that it is possible that you can survive and thrive as well and we'll take you through all the steps that you need to do in order to do that but before we jump into the game guys there's a couple of things that you want to get right before you even press the start campaign button and the first thing is get the difficulty right for you do not be ashamed to play on easy if that is the level that you want to play at comfortably and enjoy yourself nobody's watching guys play on easy it's not dishonorable to play on easy on this mod this mod on easy is probably harder than very hard on vanilla so do not be ashamed do not worry play on the level that is right for you and of course if you prefer campaign management and you don't like battles, you can tailor them based on your ability and skill set as well. Then the second thing, guys, not every single nation is made equally. Some of them will be very, very difficult, accessible only if you're completely on your A game or you're a really good player. And some of them will be a lot easier. So tailor your choice of nation based on on that second to that guys do not be afraid to restart i know that sounds crazy to a total war player and many people have some aversion to restarting a campaign if things don't go well but as someone who's played a lot of paradox games it doesn't make sense to me that total war players are so averse to this i mean i've played his and kaifa in eu4 10 times at least and never succeeded to get saladin's legacy as an achievement so don't be scared. It's something that Paradox players do all the time. And I know they're two different games, but they're both brand strategy games. And I don't think you should be averse to thinking if you get a bad start where everyone declares war on you, try go back, start at the beginning again, or go to a previous save and look at ways that you could change it round and do something slightly different. I don't think there should be any problems with that whatsoever. Right, without further ado, I've waffled on too long, guys. Let's get into the actual campaign map, and I will see you there. So here we are, guys, as the Athens start. And I'm just going to prove to you that we are on very hard, very hard, so that no one can complain at me saying <laughs> that I've been doing it on easy, just to con you all. We are on very hard, very hard, as you can see there. And we start as Athens. And as you can see, there's many reasons why this might be one of the hardest starts in the game you are surrounded by potential enemies the higher your campaign difficulty is guys as well if you uh, if you want to know um the more likely the ai is going to attack you so we, being on very hard campaign difficulty makes it very likely that if you're bordering an ai nation that they will attack you at some point so there's a few things that we're gonna do right to start with to really get our campaign on the road and you'll notice this little red up here in the corner that is the start of most campaigns in ris with a one province minor there's not much we can do to rectify like that unlike where with say the seleucids where we just deleted a load of units adjusted the taxes and we were in the positive by the end of turn one but let's have a look at some of the stuff that we can do to mitigate this and Athens is actually a fantastic city. There's so much in it. So much in it. And at this moment in time, I'm not going to try and delete any buildings to make extra money. I'm not going to need to do that. 
but we will do that in the future when we conquer some other cities. So first things first, we're going to put Athens onto very high. Of course, just to mitigate about 500 extra income from that as well. We're not actually going to delete any units this time because we're going to need them all. So let's talk about the buildings we're going to build to start with. First things first, depending on whatever nation you're playing, it might be slightly different. But for me, I've gone through these buildings and I believe it's the communal farming here. We get about 110 uh, from that. So 110. If we compare that to, say, the Agora, right now we're not trading enough for the Agora to make that much difference. And if we look at the cost difference, it is a big difference. A 4 to 1 sort of ratio there that means, you know, building the grain, sorry, not the grain imports, the communal farming is by far the most cost effective way of making some more money. Even the paved roads, you know, paved roads 288. We might consider doing those, but I'm not going to build them because we're going to build something much more important instead. We're going to build pretty much the most cost-effective building, so always look for your most cost-effective building to start with and build that straight away. Then what we're going to do, guys, we're going to look at our troops over here, and we're going to build two troops. We're going to build the Athenian Hoplites and the Theropoi. In fact, I'm going to do it Theropoi first, then the Hoplites. So we've used all our money. Now, this is crucial. On a negative money start, you want to use all your money. All of it. All of it. No questions asked. Use every single dime that you have. Promise me that. Use every single dime because if you don't, as soon as you press that end turn, there is wasted money there that is just going into the ether. So you want to re uh, use all of that money to start with. Right, we're going to get our spy over here, and we're going to see that our ally, the Boeotian League over here, is pretty much the weakest nation. Now, when you are talking about AI diplomacy, these guys are our allies. So we're moving on to step two, which is diplomacy and conquest. And the main thing with this, guys, for every single nation that you're going to play, being extremely aggressive at the start is pretty much the only way that you're going to turn that money from negative to positive. You have to be aggressive. And this includes, you know, conquering cities and destroying buildings. So I'm going to show you two different methods which you can use to make some more money. You can steamroll and just occupy, or you can go into cities and take as many and destroy as many buildings as is useful. And I'm going to show you both of those methods, because hopefully we're going to be able to take the Boeotian League out very quickly. So let's talk about your targets. Who are you going to target when you start? As Athens, we are here on this spit of land. We are surrounded by the Antigonids and the Boeotians. We have no rebel settlements nearby apart from Orios. And generally, the rebel settlements have quite a bit of garrison, guys, in this region. There's some rebel settlements over here. The other target I could go for is Sparta because they are very weak at the start as well. But what you're going to do, guys, when you start as your new nation, whether it's Athens or whether it's one of the others... Is just go for whoever is the weakest neighbor you have. Unless you're in an area where it's just rebel settlements, take the richest rebel settlement there. But if you're in a rich area with a lot of enemies around you as a small OPM, then go after the weakest neighbor that you have. Because chances are, no matter what the diplomacy you have with them right now, you can see that the Boeotians are allies. They're going to attack you anyway. <laughs> the AI views diplomacy as a handshake agreement. It does not view diplomacy as a written contract, okay? That is the best way I can put it. They, they don't give a fuck about the diplomacy you have with them at the time. All they care about is attacking you because you are the player and it is designed that way. So do not believe the AI when they say that they are your allies. That doesn't stop you, however, going to try and get powerful allies. So the first step is whatever your diplomatic stances are right now, you are going to ignore them. And you are going to look at everything with a fresh view and a view that the AI doesn't care about it anyway. And then you're going to choose your first target, which for me is the Boeotian Leagues because the Antigonid, the Antigonids are much more powerful than the Boeotians. The Boeotians only have two settlements. The Antigonids have pretty much all of this. So I'm going to go after my weak weak neighbor. 
The second thing, guys, is then to look elsewhere for some strong allies. And if anything, although I've said that the AI sees it as a handshake agreement, if anything, it should stop them attacking you straight away. So by putting in a few different little plans, it might stop them attacking you right away. So we're going to offer them trade agreements, but you can see the Antigonids are not happy. And this has happened in all my practice games of this as well. I've done a couple of practice runs. One where I went after Sparta um, and, you know, another where I went after the Boeotians just to see what the best target is. And you can see I'm already using my rule of restarting is better if you need to. So if I offer them map information as well, they might go for it, but they actually don't in this instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and look for a couple of other diplomats. But unfortunately, we're a bit stuck. So we're going to go after, instead, the Achaean League. And it's very likely that we'll be able to get an alliance with these boys because we're not bordering them. But they don't actually want an alliance. So I'm going to offer them map information. But then you can see they've already, you know, well done AI. Some great diplomacy there. You can see that handshake agreement's coming in. We're going to accept that alliance. Next next person we're going to go after is Sparta and see if we can, whether we can get an alliance with them. And, you know, worst case scenario, guys, they'll betray you. But best case scenario, when someone else attacks you, they will join the war against them. So say the Antigonids attack me now after this turn. Um, Achaean League might join. And that'll be another front for the um, Antigonids to deal with. So although I said it's, you know, it's, a, it's just paper mache agreement it's just a handshake agreement you know it does help you out in some way and especially the trade rights the trade rights are really important for you to start getting your money up of course at this point in time you know we aren't trading with them we're trading with i'm assuming actually sparta who are we trading with there let's have a look actually let's just check that out um yeah we are trading with sparta but it doesn't say we have a trade agreement with them so i don't know why but Okay, great. <laughs> and then, once you've sorted out in your head that the diplomacy is screwed, the AI is not going to care about what alliances you have anyway, you're going to gather your forces. This is the most this is the most important part, and this is the most fun part. I'm going to gather everyone apart from Kreamonides. Now, when you're choosing the forces, you pretty much want to take as many as you can. The reason I'm leaving Kreamonides in here is let me just take him out for a second and watch this money up in the corner. You can see we lose 300 instantly from removing him out of there. So I'm going to leave him in because that extra 300 is going to be invaluable. Now you want to do this pretty much with a you know, lower tier general that has less general's bodyguard. I'm kind of breaking that rule because he has 33 rather than 27 like these guys. Um, but... I want to take uh, Philo Koros across because he's 70. He's going to die very soon. So I want to use that general's bodyguard, um, you know, as effectively as possible before he dies. So we've gone through the AI uh, management. We've gone through the diplomacy. We've gone through what we're going to build. And now we're going to go for the conquest. So generally, guys, when you are a small OPM, it only takes you one or two cities before your money becomes green. So you've got to think, the faster I can get that extra city, that extra two cities, I'm going to be in the green. So the longer you wait around, the more deficit you're going to have to wait to, to overcome. So you don't want to wait around at all. And you can see the Boeotians are in a perfect position for me to do a draw-out battle against them. In terms of the troops we have, they're pretty trash. They are not good. But, you know, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it. And it says, attack ally. Do you want to do this? Of course. They would do exactly the same thing. And we get to have a look. They also have pretty horrendous troops. So we should have no problem taking these guys out. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the battle. And I'll probably edit it down a little bit. Um, don't need to give you too many tips on battle, uh, battle management. It's pretty much just the same thing as vanilla. Hammer and anvil. Try and destroy the enemy. Um, so I'll see you on the battlefield or maybe at the end of the battle, guys. Here we are, guys. We're on the battlefield. Um, I don't think I need to insult your intelligence with battle tactics, but we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, of course, there's three armies, main armies coming in. Um, and they're all separated. So what we're going to do is we are going to rush, bum rush every single army. And we could probably do this just with our general's bodyguards. I know it's a bit cheap. 
But we are playing pretty much the hardest nation. So we've got to use every single ability um, there to us. You know, of course, I you could do this with one general. Taking three just makes it a bit easier. So let's have a look. Where the hell is that army? Oh, they're up here. So they just have a general and some uh, slingers. So I'm going to just go and rush for them. Whoop. I've moved my space bar out of the way. There we are. So we're going to bring our, uh, you know, skirmish troops up as well. Uh, why are the Akontistai and the Slingers together? That should be these guys. Uh, we're going to bring these guys up as well. We're going to bring them just behind. I'm going to leave them on skirmish mode just for now. Um, and I'm just going to try and rush them with my uh, wait, my cavalry, really. Destroy that. Uh, destroy those guys. Kill the Slingers. And then we'll focus on the, the other three. So we'll see you in a second, guys. So here we are charging the first general. I believe those slingers will start to run away. We got the good charge off. They just stood there. I don't know why. Classic AI. <laughs> and we've pretty much shredded this guy. In order to take the city, though, remember, we've got to destroy all three of the armies together. And especially the army that has the... Uh, that, that, that's garrisoning, garrisoning in the city. So, you know, we'll do that. Here comes... So we've got to make sure, remember, guys, that we are literally just killing every single person here in order to take the city. They've got to have pretty much no one left. It's less than 15%. But if... Because we're not sieging the city down, if more than 15% of any of the other armies survive, they will be, be able to retreat into the city. So we ourselves have to destroy pretty much everyone in this uh, in this battle. So remember that when you are doing a draw out battle that you've got to destroy everyone. And uh, we're going to speed this up a little bit. I'm going to let that general come through. And what we're going to do is actually go straight in there for this general's bodyguard. Um, now where are you boys? You can get in there. I can't see what's going on unfortunately because of the uh, you there. So you get into there. You're going to be fighting that general. How are my generals doing over here? Not doing amazing, but they, we have shaken those guys. We've just got to make sure... Okay. That, we've killed that general. So that's fine. We don't need to kill all this. the rest of this Greek general's bodyguards. We've just got to make sure that Yuzonoi wavers and runs away. We are tired right now. That is one big issue that we have. So we'll keep our guys. We'll rest them for a little bit. Where's the rest of that general? Now, those boys are there. Are these guys actually firing? Okay, if they, they need to run away. I'm happy to keep these guys in melee. You know, if this guy dies, he's going to die very soon anyway. So I'm not too bothered about it. These guys are withdrawing. Now, that is a big problem. So, where is that other general? We're going to have to try and catch him so that he can't escape into the city. If he does, it's not the end of the world, guys. So... Yeah, don't worry too much. It shouldn't be the end of the world. We're going to have to go after this Akontistai as well. I should be able to beat this guy. We've got a lot more troops than him. And I'm hoping we can kill him. We are very tired though. So this is going to be a worry that that Akontistai gets away. There we are. We killed that general. So we've killed all the generals that we needed to. Have we? Oh, potentially not this one. But I believe that Akontistai is going to survive. That's a slight bit of a problem, but it's okay. It just means it's going to take an extra turn for us to siege it down when, you know, ideally we didn't want it to be an extra turn. You can see this this army's definitely going to survive. These two are going to die. So this one's going to retreat into the city. And at that point, you know, we're going to just siege it down and take it very quickly once the, uh, the siege ladders are in place. So I'll see you back on the campaign map, guys, where we can get that set up. Here we are, guys. And you can see they have retreated into the city. So what that really has done is just reduce the time it's going to take you to steamroll the Boeotians by one turn. Now, this is slightly concerning because the Boeotians will now be able to recruit a couple of extra units. But that is the only reason why. There's no real other reasons why. If you really want to, to risk it, you can get your spy in there. So what I'm actually going to do is lift the siege now. I'm going to try and get my spy in here. See whether they can open the gates for us. Now that is a good option for you to do to try and speed up your sieges and unfortunately 
he hasn't. But that's no problem. You can see that they have no generals left. They just have these three trashy units that will be able to scale the walls and absolutely just demolish. And, you know, the reason why I'm using my general's bodyguards so much, guys, is because they automatically come back. We've pretty much not lost any men there apart from a few Athenian hoplites, which will need retraining. But the general's bodyguards will automatically accrue more men back over time. So, let's end the turn and let's see where we're going to end up. Hopefully, we don't get attacked by anyone. <laughs> could happen, though. It could happen. But you've always got to be wary of it. And luckily, we have an army nearby if we do get attacked by anyone. The only one that would really attack us now is the Antigonids. But you can see that the Antigonids don't really have any large forces in the area. Don't be, you know, um, don't be scared. Uh, d sorry, don't be too complacent, however, because, you know, the AI can uh, really put some pain down on you if they really want to. They can recruit more than one unit in a city per turn, unlike you. So they really can stack up their armies quite quickly. So don't be complacent uh, seeing that they don't have many armies nearby because they could just draw one out their ass. It's, you know, unfortunately, it's the reality of the AI in Total War games. It could happen. So here we are. I believe, did we have a guy come of age then? No, but we do have our Theroperoid. We do have some trait increases, all that sort of thing. So this is pretty much what you're going to do. You're going to try and just keep on steamrolling everyone that you can. And I'm going to risk that 12. We lost 12 men there, so there wasn't any need to take that battle. If you really wanted to min-max it fully, you could take that battle. But for me, it's probably not worth it. You can see at the minute that that hasn't really increased the amount of money we're making. If I do that, though, we are starting to get up towards the more positive. Of course, we're not going to be able to do that. But what I would suggest that once you've taken your first city, guys, or your first couple of cities, depending on what city it is, you're, of course, going to destroy this recruitment for the, uh, the enemy's recruitment because you can't recruit from it. But we're going to look at destroying these militia barracks, all these military buildings that you've taken hold of, because your main recruitment hub for now until probably... You know, until you're expanded up to here, is going to be Athens in this area. Depending on where you start, depending on who you start as. You know, if you're starting as a, a spread out nation, that might not be the case. You might want to make your next nation into a recruit, a next province into a recruitment hub. But for me, Athens is just next door. I can recruit everything I want from there. So I don't need Tanagra to become a recruitment hub. On top of that, it's going to take me six turns before I can even recruit. And it's only got a militia barracks. Unlike us here, who has a city barracks, has cavalry stables, and an archery range. And it had a single stables. So there's no need to keep those buildings in there. They're just going to be costing you money over time. And on top of that, you can get a nice little boost of cash straight away from that. Now, we're going to chain straight into the next conquest. And you can see, have they actually recruited any men? No, they haven't recruited any men. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave our weakest... Oh, we did get a... Uh... Wait. No, we didn't get anyone come of age. We're going to leave our weakest unit in here, which I'm assuming is probably going to be our Greek slingers. And we're going to go straight for Orchomenos. Unfortunately, the, uh, the spy didn't open the gates again this time. So that's just another little bit of a delay. You can see this is a city that's making 3,500 for the Boeotians. So for us, that should hopefully be similar-ish to that. And we can, when we take the city, we'll start being in the positive again. So let's end the turn again, guys, and see what happens. Oh, yeah, I forgot about my, uh, my diplomat. Remember to keep... <laughs> Keep getting them going. We're going to trade with the, the Spartans. And we're also going to see if we can get an alliance. It's always good to stick that trade agreement in there first. Because basically, you know, they're much more likely to accept an offer once you've already got an offer that's been accepted before. If they decline an offer, it's very unlikely that they'll accept this now if I, if I offer them this. See, they will decline. So we'll probably have to wait till next turn to have a look at a... At doing that offer. I'm going to come back to the Antigonids because I really would like a trade proposal. agreement with them. If we can now get an alliance, no. no. Fortunately, our relationship is at one, which isn't great. <laughs> That's not really a great uh, relationship. In case you're wondering why I, um, why I enslave these guys rather than exterminate, exterminating guys harms your relationship with the nations around you by exterminating the populace. On top of that, by enslaving it, all I'm doing is moving it from here into Athens. So now Athens has a boom 
Uh, a boon of population, which is great. So I've got more population here to create more tax income. Rather than if I exterminated them, they would just be gone. So that tax income is just being transferred into Athens. Um, and I've, you know, increased the public order here by enslaving them, by reducing the amount of population. If we look at the uh, settlement here, you can see unrest, you can see tax penalty and squalor. If they had a bit more people, that might have been 10% and I wouldn't be able to run this city on, on very high. I'd have to run it on high. So by enslaving them, we're solving the public order issues here and increasing the amount of money we make. Um, over here and you know potentially population growth as well depending you can see from slavery here that's an extra half a percent of population growth there that's keeping it above zero which is great so let's end the turn again and basically this is what you want to just do you want to just steamroll over as many cities as you can i like to target other nations especially small ones because they tend to grow like a tumor. They tend to grow these nations. They take all the smaller uh, rebel settlements around them to start with. And then when they're in that position, they become very strong. Whereas if we go and take them out very early, they will not be able to build up the strength. The AI won't know what's hit them. That is why the blitz tactic works so well. Now, we're going to uh, assault the city, and this time we are going to play it. I probably will edit out quite a lot of it because siege battles take quite a bit of time. But you can see somehow they've managed to get another another general in there. But we've got three generals, so I'm not too worried. And the Neoniskoi are not really a very good troop. I will explain one little tactic for siege battles that is quite good. Uh, but we'll explain that once we're in the battle, guys. So I'll see you there. So here we are in the battle, guys. And you can see they have actually put some archers up on the walls. Generally, they don't tend to do that. And what you want to do if they don't do that is just get all your men up onto the walls and use them. Especially if you have missile men. You can see that all the people manning the rams are pretty much the lighter troops. I do have my hoplites here just in case. But I'm just holding them here so that it will hopefully hold those Greek archers in place. And we're going to use this little cheeky tactic that I like to use. Rather than, you know, trying to assault the gates and assault the walls, we're just going to get all our missile boys up here. In fact, I probably should have been remit. I probably should have been a bit cleverer and left the Akontistai behind and taken the Greek slingers instead, knowing that we're going to do a siege because they will do better for this little tactic that we're going to use. You can see all the walls are attacking us now. So we are going to try and get onto the walls. You can see the Akontistai are taking all the fire, which is great because they were our weakest unit. And what we're going to do, as soon as we're up on the walls, I'm going to slow it down for a second. We're just going to take these little, uh, these towers straight away. Try and get these towers straight away. In fact, all the way to the gateway with the archers there. And they're just going to instantly start firing down on those boys. These guys are going to come to here. These guys are going to take this tower. And what they will do is just shoot the enemy with their own towers, which is always great. Um, uh, what I'm actually going to do is leave these boys here for now because it looks like the archers are coming after us. So what I'm going to do, bring you through. And what we might then do is, in fact, once those towers are taken, we might get our own Theroporoi up on the walls. How long is it taking you to get up? Come on, guys. Let's go. Um, I want to take these towers first. Now these guys are here. What we might do, I'm having a look at the stats here. 7 melee attack, 10 defense. 13. Yeah, we will lose that. Unfortunately, I'm very hard. But, you know, we can we can do what, you know, we can try. So we'll get the, we're going to get the... Theroporoi, no, in fact, we'll leave the Theroporoi there. We're going to get the Athenian Hoplites actually up here. So they might get shot by this tower slightly, but it's absolutely fine. Um, and they're going to get shot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, use my uh, Akontistai to hold these guys. And once we've taken this gateway, there we are. We're going to stand here. And we're going to fire down upon the enemy from up here. Always good. Always good. So we're going to hold them with the Akantistai. Very unlikely that the Akantistai are going to last too long in this situation. But that is fine. I'm not too bothered about that. They're just there to hold them. Now, 
remember guys, you know, when you're using this tactic, you've really got to make sure that they're not on the walls. If, you're, if they are on the walls, uh, apart from like one unit, then it's a lot harder to do this tactic. But you can see right now, the towers that we have are all firing at the enemy. So they are all going to be firing into them. And what we might actually do here now is see whether we can get our archers just in behind them to fire right in their back and get you, get rid of them. Then we're going to bring the Athenian hoplites through to actually attack them. So that is good. So we don't even need to come into the city yet. We are just going to do all our damage just with this tactic. It's a very nice tactic. Uh, use it as much as you want. It really min-maxes your use of the walls in a siege battle. But you can see our Akontista are actually doing some decent damage to these Greek archers. So hopefully... Our Athenian Hoplites can get up on the walls, and our archers can get through there quick enough. They, it takes them ages to get through there. But now we're in this situation, we can actually bring our guys forward safely and not worry about getting hit by any of the towers, because the towers belong to us. Uh, so that is a good way to min-max your siege battles, guys. But I will speed this up now, probably so you can see uh, how this battle turns out in speedy mode. So now that we have made the archers pretty much vaporized, <laughs> we're now using our archers on the walls to start firing into the enemy. And we'll include our Uzonoi in this as well. So I'm going to bring them forward, hoping that these guys are going to stray close and then we can fire at them as well. Hopefully we get rid of those last four archers. You can see he's got his two generals bodyguard over there. That would be fantastic if he brings them anywhere near us. And you can actually try and bait these guys with a bit of missile fire. So I'm going to bring you forward um, and the Uzonoi over here as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and bait those guys into here with my Athenian Hoplites. So we're going to try that and see whether it works. And we'll try and see whether we can bait them in here. And then we'll bring our generals in just in case. If anything goes wrong, our generals will be here just to, uh, you know, do the damage that they need to. So you can see the way we've set up our troops here, guys, is we've set them up to really take advantage of, of our archers and our missile boys. Really in this position to take advantage of that. And I'm trying to get my, if I can get my hoplites in here, actually, we're going to halt you so you don't take the charge running. That's never a good idea to get them to take the charge running. They want to be halted. So, although they weren't in the best situation, you could see around the corner as well, guys, is always a good place to take a charge. And one thing to note, guys, remember, although we're on very hard, the AI is still really dumb. Like, the AI is still very dumb. The only difference is they get better stats. Like, that is the difference. They don't get better AI. They don't get better ability to make decisions. They just get better stats. So, <laughs> you know, you can, you can exploit the AI's dumbness as much as you want. You can see that Neoniskoi has taken quite a battering here. So we're going to fire at this Greek bodyguard. I'm going to actually get the Uzono in here. See whether they can fire into the enemy. I hope the Taze might take a bit of a damage uh, against Theo Theog Nitidis Tadas. <laughs> and you can see I'm using my broken unit over here. My Akantistai, my bad unit. To, um, to uh, hold the line while I fire my Javis into the Neoniskoi on this place. Ideally, what you want to always do is try and get them to route rather than fight them on the town square. Because remember, on the town square, guys, they uh, they have unlimited morale. They won't, they won't run away. So you want to try and bait them off the town square as much as possible. If I was being really clever here, I would try and flank this guy around here. But we would get attacked by a few of the towers that I didn't actually take. So we're going to just give them a charge and see whether they'll break due to overwhelming numbers. So that's their king. He's nicely dead, which is great. Now we can use all our cavalry to try and break Sorclias. And for now, apart from these guys, we're going to really focus on just using our general. Because our generals, as I've said, will, will automatically come back, whereas the rest of our troops will need retraining to come back. So you can see we've cleaned up everyone in the town square. So we're just going to charge this guy right in the back. 
And hopefully we will break them. We're also going to rally so that hopefully our general doesn't die on the charge. Because there is a chance that they will die just exactly on the charge, guys. Which is never something that you want to see. And there you can see they've routed straight away. So a nice and easy siege battle. And we only lost 142 men out of 615. Which I think is pretty darn good for a siege battle with stone walls, I've got to say. And you can see the Greek archers there doing so much damage. Doing the most damage by far. So a really good unit. You can see that on Tista as well, 53. So great damage from the archers. And that is why they're so powerful in offensive sieges. So I'll see you back on the campaign map, guys. Here we are, guys, and you can see we're going to enslave once again. And you can see Boeotian League already dead. So we've taken out our first faction in, what, three turns? Pretty nice, and that could have been quicker as well. So I'm going to bring my spy forward because we've already seen our next target. And that is right next to us. That is the Aetolian League, slightly bigger than the Boeotians. Three, uh, four, has he got four? Let's have a look. No, that's... Akarnania. Yeah, they've only got three settlements. And you can see this one's wooden walls as well. But we're going to do what we did before, guys. We're going to have a look at this. Boeotian recruitment. Get rid of that. We're going to get rid of the city barracks. And we are going to get rid of the cavalry stables. And we are going to get rid of the archery range. So on top of taking out our first nation in three turns, we've also gone positive in income and gone back above negative in terms of our coffers. Just in three turns, guys. So it's it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Um, so next thing, we're going to just keep on going. This is, this is it. This is the grind that you have to do early game, guys. You have to just put your head down and just damn the AI's diplomacy. Damn diplomacy and just be, you know, the Tasmanian devil in a China shop. That's what you have to be to... Uh, to uh, win in this game. And we're going to attack them. They're neutral. I don't care about any allies they might have. See, war with them. Faction destroyed. We've done pretty well there. Um, Boetians and Antigonids are now allies, but the Boetians are dead. So that might actually help our cause with the Antigonids. We aren't at currently at war with the Antigonids still, which is good. That is something I like to see. Um, so I'm going to get my guy and see whether... Hmm. What's going on here? Why can I not go for the alliance? Um, so my enemies are the Aetolians, which they're not allied with. And my allies are the Achaeans, which they're not enemies with. So that's quite strange. Normally I'd be able to, you know, go for an alliance. Oh, was that? It was the Antigonids. Maybe just because they hate us so much. But anyway... Um, we'll keep on trying to find friends. I think we're going to go up to Epirus next. Go and have a look at them. But you got to just keep going. The one issue we might have here is the fact that, you know, we might get attacked by these few armies. But you can see they're not anything too special. One thing I would be worried about is the amount of generals that they do have. So what we might do... Well, first of all, we do have this unit here. I could get an extra general in there. Well, the slingers. Well, we're going to bring our hoplites up anyway. They're going to have to join the army. So that really will be an extra boon for the army. That will be really good for the army. And let's have a look at our tax rates. We might have to just pop this down slightly. Um, we're going to be able to pop you up. Not quite to very high. We've just gone slightly under positive, which is fine. But what we're going to do is use that money. Do we have any mercenaries available? No mercenaries. We're going to use that money straight away to recruit a Zista 4. I get an extra cavalry unit in the army. And, yeah, really, really boost our cavalry potential for this army as well. Now, what I'm going to just do is see whether we can finally get lucky and open the gates with our spy. No, we cannot, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's fine. I'm not too worried about the, um, the rest of the Aetolians. And if they do come for a big battle... We'll have pretty much destroyed them straight away. Um, destroyed the rest of their army. So they shouldn't be too much of a worry from then on. So, let's end the turn again. Let's see where we end up at. 
Um, I'm wondering, yeah, we're going to come around to Epirus, see whether we can get an alliance with them. The big worry here now, for me, in as Athens, is that the Antigonids come after us. And if they do, we'll quickly have to scramble to get a ceasefire. But this is pretty much what you got to do, guys. you got to keep rolling over people and going crazy, going ham, until you are starting to make real money. Now, if I was in a diff slightly different situation, I might destroy some more buildings... To have a look for mercenaries. But unfortunately there are no mercenaries available. If there were mercenaries. What I'd potentially look at doing. Is you know destroying probably the Odeon over here. Because it's not needed right now. And a couple of other buildings. You know through here. Just to try and build. Um, get some mercenaries. Some extra troops in this army. Because although we've got three generals. It's not the strongest army in the world is it. Let's actually auto sort it. There we are. Hopefully they don't attack us before we can get our new Hoplites unit in, but you never know. So let's end the turn and let's see what happens. We'll, we just wait to see what the Aetolians do. Um, so you can see, guys, how in three turns we've already got positive money. And you know it's saying minus 500 now. That is because, okay, the Aetolians are going to go for the ceasefire. Let us now I'm going to, you know, I am going to entertain this because remember... Diplomacy is, you know, a glass, uh, sorry, a just just a handshake agreement. And I can't remember which town we were actually sieging down, so I'm going to say that. And I'm going to say I'll give you trade rights map information for that, but they will decline. We must decline. But there they're going to come and attack us, and you can see they don't have much of an army. They are really don't have much. <laughs> They've got this guy with his Greek archers, his Uzonoi, and his general. And we've got a general with some Uzonoi and Prodromoi. Now, they're attacking us, so we are going to take a defensive position. And we're just going to shoot them to death. That's all we're going to do. So I'll see you on the battle map, guys. So it's not the greatest uh, defensive position, but it was the only place on the map where we weren't con uh, consumed by trees. <laughs> so I have set up here, but we're probably just going to speed through this battle, guys, and I'll show you the results at the end. So you can see what I'm doing here, guys. I'm sending my... I've destroyed the first little army, but they had some troops running away. The Greek archers and the, uh, the Uzonoi. And I'm sending my weakest general, my lowest amount of troops of general, to go and charge them down. Because it's really important that all these armies die in order for us to take the settlement this turn. We don't want to make the mistake that we made last time where we didn't kill everyone, so we couldn't take it all at once. So I'll see you in a little bit, guys. My greatest worry with this second army is that the Prodromoi escape because they're a lot quicker than my cavalry and they can do a lot of damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus them down with my archers. He's seen that, so he's going to come and try and take me down or my archers down. But if he runs his general over here, we can have a go at trying to surround him and destroying that general once and for all. So, you know, he's kind of making a mistake by coming so far out of position with this guy and that allows both my uh, him not to get a charge off and my Theroperoi to fire into him so he's made quite a big error there but again the AI isn't any smarter on very hard they just have a lot better uh, a lot better stats and you can see already we're absolutely shredding them we're getting shredded by a few javis but we want to be able to take out the, all of that Prodromoi So they're going to run away. That's fine. I'm going to step back then. I'm going to allow my archers to do the rest of the damage. My Theroperoi are going to take a bit of damage from that. But that is fine. I'm going to try and get my cavalry around the back so we can sandwich that Prodromoi. And if he wants to fight my Uzonoi, we can go in with our Uzonoi as well. They're not withdrawing, are they? Ideally, I want my Uzono to be the uh, the target. He's charged his Prodromoi into my generals, which is kind of stupid of him. We should be able to kill quite a significant number of them before they get away. 
Oh, you can see that. Look at that. So them being down to that amount of troops is really good for us. That means there's very little chance that this army is going to survive. So I'm glad we've managed to do that and catch them. And sometimes you could see maybe on that sped up bit that... Um, that I took quite a bit of damage on the Theroperoi and the Hoplites there from Javis being thrown at us. But we had to take it, guys. We had to take it in order to bait them into charging us. If we'd have ch chased after them, we would have been chasing after them forever. My cavalry can't keep up with the Prodromoi, and my infantry couldn't keep up with their Uzonoi. So it was a better way. Take a few casualties now in order to rout them later. So we'll speed it up, and I'll see you at the end of the battle. Here you are, guys, and you can see we deployed 447. We lost about, you know, 100, 100 or so, 108 it looks like, with uh, our casualties being healed. Did we get many? Not many healed. Um, but yeah, you can see bodyguard doing really well. Bodyguards are always OP, but the archers doing decently as well, as well as the Uzono, Uzono, actually, Uzono, <laughs> the Uzonoi actually as well. Cool. So I'll see you back on the campaign map and the city should be ours more importantly. Here we are. And we did take the city this time, which is fantastic. And if we're lucky, the Aetolians might even, we're going to enslave again, might even siege us down here so we can do a defensive siege battle. Looks like we're not so lucky. However, I'm glad that we didn't get that other army coming in because it would have been a really, really dogfight of, uh, of a battle there. Now, we're into the city once again, so we're going to do what we did last time. We're going to destroy the building. We're also going to have a look at that temple, but that is the Oracle of Delphi. We're definitely going to keep that. Wow. Very, very nice building. Put that up to very, very high, and you can see we're now making money, guys. 900 a turn. 900 a turn. Who would have thought that on turn four, when we started with minus 3,000, that we are now making 900 a turn? That is very nice indeed. On top of that, we've now got our new farming over here. So we should be making even more money. We did start, I think it was about 2,800 this settlement started on. And you can see it's now got population growth as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep on going. We're going to destroy the Aetolians. And I'm going to bring these guys through if I can. They're not quite going to be able to reach there. Now, out of all these guys, I probably want to leave that 35 Theroperoi behind. Not the most efficient pick. We're just going to come out and see whether they're still happy on very high. And we're going to attack these guys. Now, I'll do this off camera, guys, because it's obviously going to be a pretty easy battle. So, I'll see you in a second. So, here we are, guys. And pretty much, we just used our skirmish troops. So, our Uzonoi over here. You can see they did 51 casualties. And our archers, only 15, but that is because they were firing straight at the enemy. Just to whittle them down to start with. And then what we did was it, we actually charged our Uzono in to start with. And then charged our Athenian Hoplites around the sides to hit them in the flanks. With the general then coming from the back. The good old hammer and anvil. And by getting the Uzono to charge in first, they actually took the first volley from the Theroperoi. And then managed to engage them. So the Theroperoi couldn't fire their javis into my higher of value troops of the Hoplites. So that is how we avoided so little casualties with these boys which is really nice so i'll see you back on the campaign map boys so we beat them back and what we're going to do we're going to get our spy out once again and hopefully this time it might work <laughs> oh i don't know it might not work <laughs> we've got a captured flag and he has become a superior commander as well um so when we saw that they do actually have four troops there three in there i think we can take that with our bit of a general stack so i believe they will Sally out. We weren't. We didn't open the gate then, did we? No. Ah, that's slightly annoying. But again, these troops are not too great. And I'm sure we'll do fine if they come and come and attack us. Now, we do have money now, guys. So let's talk about what we're going to start building when we actually get to the point where we have some money. We're going to have a look at all the settlements we have, which at the minute's four. <laughs> so it's not exactly too hard. We're going to look for the ones that are making the most money. And of course, it's going to be Athens, our capital. So we need to look for, for you know, buildings that are going to bring us a lot of money per cost. So if we look at this crop rotation, we can go on to the settlement details. It's, see, it's about 120 again. How about the winery? Now, that is more about 100 and, you know, 160-ish. 
And that costs 1,700, so that's a really good uh, cost-effective building. And alongside that, what that will allow us to do is then recruit another Zistaphoroi or another Archer once again. So, what we're going to do is we are going to recruit an Archer. The other thing you could do at this point, guys, is you could take your Theroporoi here... Get it back for retraining and replace it with a low upkeep unit with an upkeep here of only 486. No, sorry, an upkeep of 301. Uh, the archers, on the other hand, 312 and the Acantistae, 333. The Prodromo is still a bit more, so you really want to get that lowest upkeep unit as your garrison unit better than anything else because... You know, although it's only 80 men compared to, say, the Akantistai's 100, it's going to be providing a good garrison bonus for little, little cost. So that is really what you want to go for. Start swapping out these guys when you can. I can't wait for that Zistaphore to get in there. That's really going to help us out as well. Even more Cav. If in doubt, guys, get Cav. So we've built in Athens. Let's have a look. Is there any very low... Uh, money buildings. We could repair that. How much is that? 672 to repair. I don't think that's worth it just yet. So there's no other buildings in here that we can quite afford yet because they all actually have the base level farming. So what I would do if I was you guys is I would probably wait another turn unless this trade is going to provide much, but it won't. 72. It's actually not too bad. You know, it's only about you know, 14 turns or so to make its money back. So that's actually not too bad. A port, on the other hand, would be nice. But if they didn't have that base level farming, that is the best building you can go for right now. Going for that really low tier base level farming will just provide a nice bit of income for you. Let's have a look. See, taxes, trade, farms. You can see 220 from that singular small building that only costs 600. 100% worth it, guys. So if you don't have that, get it in there. Now, yeah, I think I think we're good. I think we're good. What we're going to do is we're going to end the turn again and see what happens. I'm not going to build again because I want to build that farming, like I've said. When you're early game, you want to focus on the farming and the mines. And then when you start becoming bigger and bigger, the trade then becomes really important. It's really important to have roads between your, uh, bef between your cities for trade and ports between your cities. They're the two most important things for trade, guys. And then you can start adding on top of that the traders, the markets, the silk roads, all that sort of thing. Um, but early game, really focus on that farming. It is definitely the most important um, element of the early game. So, they haven't even come and sallied out. So, we're going to see if we can take this city down. And I will see you at the end of the battle, guys. Because I'm going to do this by myself. There we are, guys. And we pretty much used the same tactic that I showed you before. So, I didn't need to show it again. Uh, use the archers on the walls. And then when uh, we'd force them away from the walls, we uh, used the archers to fire into the town square to bait them out and then fully surrounded the three units that were in there. You can see the Hoppers, they took a bit of damage, but they did get charged by the general, and it was a big general as well. But the general did well, and the archers again, 35, which is quite decent. It's a positive KD, so it's always quite good, and they got a bit of healing. A lot of that damage, that 30, there's 23 casualties, was them assaulting the walls, so... You know, be wary of that if you are using that tactic. Your archers will get whittled down over time. So you're going to want to retrain them at some point. But anyway, I'll see you back on the campaign map, boys. Here we are. And we've taken now, Cap uh, now Pactos. And we'll enslave. And look at that. Look at what they've done for us, guys. Look at what they have done for us. What a glorious thing for them to do. Thank you, uh, Itolian League. Oh, they actually have another. They have Onidaya over here. I didn't realize that. I thought they only had one. What I'm going to do... Um, gonna... That's two. I wonder whether two men could hold this place <laughs> effectively. Let's see. Yep, they're still happy on normal. So, we're going to do a draw out battle. And what do they have? They've got some Hoplites. They've got their faction leader. They've got some Prodromoi. And they've got some Yuzono and Akontistai. Well, um, I will fight this battle again, guys. And we shall have another city under our control.
I'm not going to lie, guys. That battle was so much closer <laughs> than it needed to be. But luckily, it looks like we have killed them enough so that we can take the city. But that was so brutal. That was so close to losing. The only thing that saved us was killing their general right there at the end. You can see my hoplites got ruined in that battle. But they basically did all the heavy lifting, allowing the cavalry to hammer an anvil once again. The archers actually took some damage from uh, their general. Their general actually did quite a bit of damage. Look at him, 144. Pretty nice. But that was brutal. That was cutting it very fine. So we might either need to get some mercenaries or look to, uh, you know, bring some new troops into the army before we march forward. But we shall see when we're back on the campaign map. Here we are. And yes, we have taken it. Fantastic. So we'll enslave Thermon as well. And I think at this point, we might have pushed our luck just, just to the edge of where it is sensible right now. But you can see the money that we are making now. 5,000 a turn. And we haven't even had a look in here. One thing to note, guys, although I said right at the start you want to be deleting your military buildings, when you start getting, you know, a bit further away, all the way over here, it's quite far for your troops to march. Oh, we have a new uh, general as well. Quite far for your troops to march. So, what you probably want to do at that point is look to make another recruitment hub over this way. And Thermon's only a town, so it's probably not a good idea for it to be a recruitment hub. So now Ka now uh, Pactos, if I can speak, is a good option because first of all, uh, it's a large town to start with and it's available to have a blacksmith. Not everywhere in this uh, in this game can have a blacksmith, guys. Although Thermon has city barracks, cavalry stables and archery range. I don't know where that's come from. <laughs> but I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, it's, it's there. So, and the two men... The two Athenian hoplites, the bl the brave hoplites are holding down that city. Hopefully we don't get attacked there. But we can see we have another general. So, you know... <sighs> I know I said we've pushed our luck, guys, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to push it a little bit more. Am I? Am I going to push it a little bit more? I am. <laughs> Is the answer. <laughs> oh, we can't actually siege it down this turn. That's really annoying. I've messed that up. I should have sieged it down first. Why can you not get in there? Oh, I can't do any more actions this turn. Okay, fair enough. And now Athens has expanded from all the enslavements we've been doing. So, that's a lot of money. We'll wait till we can get that. So, yeah, I've, do I've done a little min-max error there, guys. I've brought this guy through here. So, they can't actually siege the town down this turn. So, that's annoying because they might actually recruit some men. But next turn, we'll manage to siege them down. And let's have a look. Are there mercenaries available? No, there are no mercenaries available. That is unfortunate. And I'm leaving Philo Koros in here. After we've done this... We're going to be in a pretty stable situation. How many turns are we in? We're in five turns, guys. And we're making nearly 6,000 a turn. The economy is not broken, guys. The economy is not broken. It just You just need to be so aggressive. That is how you get out of these really tough spots early on. But with that money, what are we going to do? We are building in Athens already. So let's have a look for some more sort of good buildings to build. And I'm tempted to go for a recruitment hub in Orchomenos so we can start recruiting over this region as well, just in case the Achaean League decide to pop across. Um, and it's a bit closer, isn't it, than moving troops all the way across. So that's the first thing. Mm, actually, no. But we are, we're making 6,000 a turn, so I'm quite happy. Actually, in fact, what we're going to do is... is for, no, that is... That is the main thing. That is the most important thing. Being able to retrain these boys over here. Secondly, let's build a communal farming potentially there. This has all the buildings. Let's get some more money. We don't need these cities barracks in Thermon. It's only a town, guys, remember? 
it's not going to be uh, very good for recruiting for quite a while. So let's get that extra money. And that will allow us then to actually build a little bit more. And potentially the port. Let's have a look at how much money that port's going to bring in. 356. It's 2,500. So less than 10 turns it's going to take to repay itself. That is really, really good. So let's, uh, let's go for that. And then, you know, I think the second thing we're going to do is actually train a troop. Hmm. And I'm thinking going for an archer, but we shall see. Let's go for... Let's re repair, repair that and get the shrine to Zeus over there. Everywhere else, there's not too many great buildings to build. That shrine to Zeus will give us extra, you know, give us money back in the long term. Civic buildings, construction time, minus 5% cost. So that's quite good. That Over time, that's going to pay for itself quite nicely. Right. Without further ado, let's end the turn and see where we end up. Five turns in, guys, and we're making 6,000 a turn. Obviously, a large part of that is the... Uh, reduction in upkeep for our army as they get whittled down and whittled down. But that's another reason to go aggressive, guys. That's another reason to be really aggressive. Is because of that whittling down of your army will make mean you make more money in the long run. So using your troops that you have, always a great option. And let's see. Is it going to work this time? Yes! <laughs> it is. We'll wait. We'll wait a second and we'll actually use the rest of our money. So, let's have a look. Where are we not building? Thermon, we're not building. There isn't really much to build here. So, you know, what I could have done is potentially get that recruitment building here. Because I had level 2 of everything, whereas this only has level 1. But this does have access to the blacksmith, which is great. Um, and it's only a town, like I say. It's going to be a while before that gets upgraded. So, that's going to be quite good. Look at the uh, population growth here now, guys, as well. And if I go on to the settlement details, you can see 2.5% from slavery. How much is Athens benefiting from that? Still 2.5%. That's really good. So let's have a look at Tanagra. What can we build in Tanagra? Let's go for that communal farming. We love the communal farming, guys. Really, really beneficial building to build. And if you really want to, guys, you can build these elite tax buildings. They cost 3,000, but they make 500 a turn. It doesn't actually show up up here because it uh, counts as something else. I can't remember why, but it will make you an extra 500 a turn. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna refrain from building those because they're only there if you're really struggling. So I'm gonna refrain from building that for now. But at the minute, we're pretty much building as much as we can everywhere we can. So what I'm gonna do is now we want uh, Athens. Oh, Athens is upgrading, isn't it? Now that we have a load of cash, let's splash the cash. And get some Athenian hoplites. And ideally, we kind of want to replace the garrison in Delphoi. Get rid of those Theroporoi. And the one in now Pactos. And use that troop. Bring it back. Retrain it. In fact, it's probably worth, once we've got a garrison troop there, just to disband that too. Because it has no experience. So there's no point retraining that, that unit. Just might as well recruit a new one. So we'll splash the cash. Make some uh, make some more troops. And let's end the turn. See where we end up. Oh, there we are. Let's uh, see whether we can trade rights with these boys. If I give them map information. You can do this map information exploit quite a bit if you want. Would you consider... A, a 170. I mean, that's, not, that's nothing. <laughs> but, you know, I, uh, yeah. You can do that if you want. You can go around trying to sell your map information for the lowest bidder. <laughs> um, and that will help your income as well, but... You know, that's a lot of min-maxing. I CBA with that. What's happening there? Who's who's attacking? I very much feel like we're going to be attacked by the Achaean League. One thing to remember, though, guys. Say, for example, next turn, this big army attacks now Pactos. All it's doing is taking out those two troops. Yes, we're going to lose the money on the Athenian recruitment. But apart from that, the AI is so slow at expanding... Um, after it's taken a city. It'll take now Pactos and just sit in there for ages. So you don't need to panic. If you lose one of these settlements that you've blitzed. You don't need to panic guys. Don't panic. Just take your time. Build your army back up. And go and take it back. And you will be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. And we've built that uh, port in Orchomenos now. Here it is. Very nice. Getting some trade going. 
So let's smash that communal farming in there. And you can see that's only about 100. That trader's not too much either. And they're about the same amount of money. So there's not too much difference between the two. And we are building, you know, as much as we really can, which is nice. You know, I can I put that elite tax building in there just so you can see it. But, ah, oh, what am I doing? I forgot to attack. Okay, a min-max error again, guys. <laughs> but if that was you, I would you would have you would attack there. Um, and look, they've all re replenished now quite nicely. Is there any mercenaries? There is one, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna get that because we have so little infantry troops there that it's it's worth getting. And the Greek Peltas, in case you don't know, are not horrendous in melee, so they can hold their own in melee. So that's quite nice. Let's end the turn again, and we're gonna be close to the end of the the video, guys. We, I've shown you how, you know, within five turns you can get five thousand income. It's pretty nice. Um. You know, I wanted to go to about 10 turns, but we've done so much <laughs> in such a little amount of time. We didn't even need to go that far. But yeah, it's been quite brutal. But that is how you have to be, guys. You've got to be brutal. Brutal with your attacks. So, any more mercenaries come available? No. We'll get the Zistaphore in there. We'll do that. What I'm going to do, because we're going to end the end the episode here, guys. I'm just going to do that. We're just going to auto-resolve, and we did actually win. And now we've destroyed the Aetolian League. So, eight turns, guys, it's taken us. And that's with a couple of min-max errors. We could have done it in seven turns. Uh, it has taken us, you know, seven turns, eight turns, to destroy both the Boeotians, the Aetolians, and now have an income of 6,000 a turn, have 10,000 in the bank. I know our army isn't very strong right now. Oh, look at Heracletus. Look at that management. So, yeah, I could have been min-maxing my governors as well. But Heracletus would be great to govern one of these better cities that's making more money. Um, and now you're at this point where you're making so much money. What you can then start to do is start reducing your tax income. Because at the end of the day, you're starting to make more money from farming and that sort of thing. It's going to reduce it a little bit. This is completely dependent on the situation, of course, guys. And by putting it everything onto low, putting Athens on low, of course, is is not great right now. And it still has 2% growth, so I'm going to ignore, uh, ignore that for now. But everywhere else on low, so they start growing. And over time, you'll make more and more and more money. So you'll make even more money in the long run. Now, while we're here, let's destroy that. It's got a second level of port here as well, which is fantastic. And what we can do now is we can leave. And hopefully Heracletus will be plenty happy. We can go all the way back to Athens for our retraining. And, uh, you know, we can start building up a proper army, guys. A proper army to then take forward. I think at this point, you know, you once you've expended that original army, it's pretty much expended now. Is you can consolidate for a couple of turns. Like if I went after here, there's no chance I'd win that. We're not with the Zistaphora and the Greek Hoplites. You know, yeah, not with this army. We're not going to beat that. You can come back, retrain your army, get a nice good army going, stick in another Theroporoi in there so we can get a, a decent sized army, and then you can redo what we did at the start. Whereas where um, we looked at the the targets around us and we chose which one to go for. If I, in this position right now, what I would do is take these two settlements, these two rebel settlements, because pretty much everywhere else we're surrounded by the Antigonids and the Achaeans. And if, you know, we take those two settlements and no one's attacked us, that's when I'd look at going probably for the Achaeans, the weakest. I know it says ally, guys, but like I said, the AI doesn't care about that. You shouldn't care about that either. And then I'd probably go for the Achaeans and probably try and take over uh, the peninsula over here. Maybe even Sparta. Maybe even sail on a boat to Sparta because they're quite weak early game. And there's a nice couple of settlements in here. Olympia is obviously great for the Shrine to Temple of Zeus, keeping all your settlements happy. But we are in a fantastic situation. We're in a nice, stable situation. And I think that's time, really, to wrap this up, guys. It's only been eight turns, but you can see how far we've come. In that time. No nation is impossible. This was all on very hard. I'll just show you again. 
<laughs> I'll show you again, guys, so you can see. It's all on very hard. Everything I've done here has been on very hard. Um, so, you know, it's possible. And this is one of the hardest nations in the whole game. So it is possible, guys. It is possible. Just tailor it to the difficulty that is right for you. So let's go over a few of the final points that we've talked about before, just to reiterate them. So remember, tailor it to the difficulty for you. Obviously, not all of you are going to be able to play Athens on very hard. If you can't, just tailor it to the difficulty that right, that's right for you. You don't need to. There's no one watching. Just don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. And like I say, easy on RAS is probably very hard in vanilla. So there's no shame whatsoever. Just do it. Just use the difficulty that you enjoy. Um, don't be afraid to restart, guys, if you didn't have a really good start. Say the Antigonids attacked us on turn one. That's probably a good time to think, maybe I should restart. Maybe I should go again because maybe I'm not going to survive this one. Um, and then remember that not all nations are for everyone. You know, obviously this was just Athens, but all these tactics that I've used here are the same for pretty much nearly every faction that starts small and is really difficult at the start. Of course, if we're talking Seleucid, something like that, there's a whole different raft of challenges. And you can check out my Seleucid videos uh, for that as well. Remember, early building is farms and mines, guys. Farms and mines. And then when you start making a little bit of money, you can then move into the ports into the trading buildings, but always, especially... Oh, that's upgraded and it didn't tell us. Or maybe it has told us. No? No, it didn't tell us. Okay. Uh, don't tell us, it's fine. Um, But yeah, when you get to this point, guys, you know, start looking at trade buildings. Always go early game. If you're struggling with the economy, the most cost-effective buildings, that means the cheapest buildings for the highest output early game, and that generally is farming. That generally is farming. Remember, you have to be aggressive. You have to recruit and use all your money on the first turn. And then after that, use your army as much as possible to get as much as possible, as quick as possible. Because if you don't do that, you will struggle. You will really struggle. So use all the units at your disposal, disposal including generals, to try and blitz as many settlements as you can. Remember the AI diplomacy it doesn't care about you so you should not care about it you should not care about betraying allies or any of that thing because the ai will do it at, at the drop of a hat you know the ai doesn't care for friendship or loyalty the ai just cares that you're the player then remember when you are starting to take settlements you can destroy buildings for that extra bit of money that'll really then boost into your economy and give you a nice economy later on so I think that's it, guys. I think that is everything. I really do hope this has helped some of you out, especially the guys commenting saying it's too hard, the economy's broken, that sort of thing. I hope I've proved that it's not, and I hope that you have taken enough from this video to know that you can, you know, use any nation you want, and you can win. None of the nations are unplayable. You can do it, guys. I believe in you. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you have enjoyed please consider liking. We're on the way to 3,000 subscribers. That would be so good if you could subscribe and like to this video. It took a lot of work, so thank you very much for watching, guys. And if you have any more questions, guys, make sure you comment them down below, and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. And I'll see you all again on the next video.